Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Ines Alea and welcome to the CraterGalaxy.com space station. In today's video, we're gonna see how to recreate this trippy, awesome effect. All right, so that looks really cool. I actually found this effect on Instagram by a guy named Kevin McGlochlin underscore Graham. Sorry if I don't spell that correctly. Uh, but I will put that in the description if you want to go and check this guy out. He has amazing stuff and he inspired me basically to make this video. As you can see, we also have an entire new space. We actually moved to a bigger room just because the sound is better here. And there is a little bit more overview because I'm always working with Enzoe. He's currently not here though. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, we have the sound panel. So that should make the audio a little bit better because it was quite terrible, let's be honest, in the other room. So we were, we were trying to do anything that we could do to make that sound better because I hate bad audio quality. So let me know if this is better. Um, it's still not perfect though. We're still going to finish off the room. We only have these walls here, which makes the video look great, but not the actual, uh, the entirety of the room is actually a terrible mess. And we still have gotta do a lot of things. Anyway, uh, we recorded this video with a gimbal, uh, the Fatech AK4500 to be exact. And if you want to use my footage, I will put a link in the description below where you can find uh, the exact same video clip so you can follow along with this tutorial using the same footage as me. Actually, Fatech sent over this Fatech AK4500 uh, gimbal, which is a handheld three axis stabilizer that works with almost all cameras up to 4.6 kilograms. So it's really for heavy weight cameras, which is super nice, especially uh, when I'm using a heavier camera with a heavier lens setup. It's really hard to get a gimbal working for that. It's detachable and has a versatile handle, which is super handy uh, to get those lower angle shots or to get some extra stabilization on your gimbal. But if you don't like it, you can also just easily take it off. Uh, it also comes with like a remote controller, which is super cool if you have it like on a very high boom pole uh, where you're doing some kind of nice screen effects. Uh, so I really do enjoy uh, this gimbal. It also has a touchpad where you can just sw switch easily between the modes instead of pressing a button a, bu a bunch of times and then just having to guess what more you're on or having to try it. So it's really uh, very usable and you also don't really need the app. You can do like all the settings within the gimbal itself. So it's definitely worth a try to check it out. I'm not going to review this entire gimbal because that's not up to me. That's not what the channel is about. So definitely go and check reviews on them. They have a bunch of great commentaries. So it's also my go-to gimbal uh, right now. The battery will last up to 12 hours on one charge and the setup is really, really quick and simple and I'm, I'm not lying. So when we're, we're planning on going out, we just put it on the gimbal and like within 30 seconds, it's completely stabilized and ready to go. So yeah, that's, that's also something that we really, really do like. Anyway, if you would like to find out more, I will put a link in the description below where you can go and check out the entirety of this gimbal. Let's continue with our tutorial. All right, so here we are in Adobe After Effects. And as you can see, this is the footage that I will be using for our shot. So I'm just going to drag this into a new composition. And the first thing that I want to do is actually track it. So I'm going to change my resolution to full here so we can see what is going on. Um, I think the sharpness is okay, but it could have been better. Anyway, it was like just quickly shooting and we didn't put it on autofocus. And I'm sorry for that, but it's, it's okay. It's pretty sharp, it's okay. Um, so what I will be doing is going to the tracker tab. And if you don't see that, we can go to window and then go to the tracker. We want to track the camera. So we're going to click on this button. And I always like to open up the advanced settings here and check detailed analysis. That's going to give like a deeper track to your shot, I imagine. So just gives you a little bit more data to work with, uh, which is really handy in this case. So it's done tracking and you can see a bunch of dots on your shot. Uh, which represents each track point. So you have to select your effect in order to, to see those. But what I like to do here is to right click on one and that is close to the camera and right click create null in camera and then go like one in the background and also create a null for that. Then I like to press P on the keyboard for the nulls. Then I can see between minus 200 and 20,000 or 22,000 actually. Um, that's kind of the depth of this scene. So that's something that I like to keep in mind to also to have that projection um, be in between that Z depth space. So don't go over that, don't go underneath that number. That's something that I like to keep in mind. Uh, we have our camera here and then we have our footage. I'm going to be duplicating our footage 
That's the first thing that I'm going to be doing. But when you put it on a 3D layer and you're going to press P on the keyboard, we can push it in space or we can push it back in space. The only problem starts is we want this frame to be the exact same width and height of your sh uh, shot. So what you can do is like scale it up, but it's not going to snap here. So you're not entirely sure if it's perfectly on the same scale. So that's something that I've been struggling with uh, to make that perfect. So what I like to do is I'm like, I try to go to transform and then like fit to the comp width. Okay, that does the job. But then I also noticed it resets the Z position and that's not what we want. So before we start on the actual solution for this, I like to freeze this frame. So currently this frame is moving forward or actually, I don't know what is going on because it's a tree layer. Currently this footage is going forward. So that's not what we want or we can actually use that, um, but that was not like the plan initially. So we're going to right click time and freeze the frame and delete the 3D camera tracker. And that just freezes the frame. So we want to push it back in space like we did before, but we also want to make sure that it's the same size of our composition, just so when it overlaps with the other footage, you don't see any difference in the beginning of your shot. And to do this, we do need an expression. Um, I didn't make my, this expression myself. I just like Googled a lot. I did a lot of research on how to achieve something like when you play with Z depth to fit to your comp size. And I found this expression. I will put it in the link. Uh, in, okay. I'm going to put it in the description where you can just copy and paste it. Um, so basically I have it right here. So we're going to copy this and then we go into the scale for this 3D layer, press S on the keyboard. We're also going to press uh, P on the keyboard by holding shift and pressing P. That way we see the position and the scale together. We're going to alt click on the stopwatch for the scale. And then we're just going to paste our expression, control V. So there we go. We have that. And what that does is if we click on it, it just fits it to the comp size. So it's really simple actually. So we have this comp dot layer 3D tracker. So it's going to look at the 3D tracker camera. By the way, if you have a different name for your camera, it's really important to select the 3D here camera and then just to rename it to your camera. It might depend, but if you're using the camera tracker, originally your camera is just going to have that name. So that's why I put that name in there. And then it's going to look at the camera option dot zoom. So the zoom effect of your camera and then it's going to transform the scale multiply it by an expression that just makes it fit to the comp size <laughs> i'm not going to dive into much detail here but that's exactly what we want so we're going to put one at like minus 100 we're going to duplicate this and then like put one at 200 duplicate it once more put one at 2000 duplicate it once more maybe at 5000 once more and maybe 10,000. So that should be enough to start with. But like, as you can see right here, we stayed within the range of minus 200 and two thousand, well, 22,000. So you can add as many as you want to create as much depth as you want. But like the more you vary, vary with that Z depth number, the more kind of parallax effect you're going to get. So for now, I'm just going to unselect all of them and I'm just going to go through one by one. So this is one that is close to the camera. So what I like to do is also pick things that are close to the camera. So I'm going to, for example, select a part of this car, uh, maybe also a part of the ground like this. And what we can do is actually click on this mask right here and then uh, press Control D and then with, uh, with the shift key holding down, we can press the arrow down key to duplicate that mask uh, and then duplicate it once more and again, and again, so we have some kind of stripes here. Uh, we can also go and add one here and maybe a long one here. Then we can go on to the next one. We can unselect this and go to the next one. Uh, and maybe here we want to go like more towards the mid tones here or like uh, the mid range here. So maybe the wheel here. Uh, maybe again, we can make some long ones here uh, like that. Uh, maybe something like that. Okay. So you can go crazy here. Or you can just duplicate this one and move it over. Something like that should be fine. And then maybe also on the side here or this window, maybe a longer part, this pole, maybe. We can also like move 
uh, each individual point here to really select only that pole. Uh, it's completely up to you. You can also use your pen tool to pen out things. There, there we go. And then like we can uh, just check it out. Okay, that seems about right. We can go on to the next one so, and select this one, go to the next one. And then may, maybe more towards like the center here. So maybe uh, we want to use uh, that car here. Uh, maybe we want to use uh, this kind of stuff here. Like that. And maybe these windows. And this window. And there we go. And just play around with a little bit of everything. And then two more to go. So then we have this one, maybe this car here. Like that. Maybe a part of the sky. And then one last one. Maybe here in the back. You're probably not going to see too much from the sky, but anyway. So we got everything set up. And then we can select all of these. And if we're going to play this, wow. Can you see this? That looks really, really cool. So we can see that there is not too much uh, variation going on here. So we're going to check everyone uh, individually now. So we can press M on the keyboard really reveal those mask layers here. So right here, we maybe we want to add a little bit more like over here. Some parts. So that's our first one. For the second one, maybe we want to add a little bit more. And then for the third one, maybe also a little bit more in the center. And just play around, you know. And that way you create like the ones that get close to the camera. And these are the ones that I really, really enjoy seeing here. That's getting very trippy. Okay, cool. And then a little bit more. here. Okay, maybe this one we do want to change a little bit more off center and a little bit smaller. But basically, that's how you achieve the effect. And it's a really, really simple tutorial because now you know how to do it. But basically, it was kind of research on how to achieve this effect as close as possible. And I found this way to work the best. Of course, you can also do camera projection, but this gets too complicated for what it is. So probably um, the guy from Instagram did it in a different way. I don't know if he ever ends up watching this video. Maybe let me know in the comments below. And yeah, it's, it's a really cool effect. Like I wouldn't have imagined it to create something like that. But when I saw it, it was like, really, wow, that's, that's so cool. And imagine this in music videos or getting like trippy kind of nice shots. I, I really enjoy this. So, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as well. Um, if you did, give this video a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and give and check the notification bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram because I post a ton of the fun stuff over there. Like recently, I worked together with the Cinecom team, which was a great experience. We're both from Belgium, so that was really cool. Um, we're going to make we actually recorded something together. I can't say too much about it, but it's going to be released very, very soon. And until next time, take care and goodbye.